I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to always be joined by my brother, all the way in Ireland, Gary Cully. Gary, before we start, man, do you have a good Christmas? Yeah, man. Uh, good to just chill out for a couple of days. Christmas fell on Sunday, so I got a little rest day of rest. I've seen a few people out running, but Sunday's my day of rest. So now it was good just to chill out. Um, yeah. and say again? I was going to say, well, you were out running this morning because I seen it on your Instagram. Out running this morning. Today is a Monday, so uh, <laughs> I have to I have to get out the week and start the week right. But yeah, no, yesterday fell on a Sunday, so little day of rest. Um, two good sessions on Christmas Eve, but yeah, it was good to just chill out yesterday, have some family time, and uh, excited for a big twenty three. Well, that's what I want to do. I do want to talk about what your hopes, hopes and aspirations are for twenty twenty three, but I just want to get your your review of this year twenty twenty two. Um, sign on match room. You beat a legend in Miguel Vasquez, stopping him in the fifth round. Only Josh Taylor has truly stopped somebody like Miguel Vasquez. Um, and then, obviously, that impressive first-round stoppage of an uh, undefeated uh, fighter in Bel- 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 Belmedi, I think his name was. So, yeah. yeah, good year for you? Good year. I would have liked to fight once more, yeah. uh, ideally. But there was a lot going on outside the ring, not having... Uh, I obviously got the chance to fight on a matchroom card back in March on that big uh, Condon Wood card. Put in a big performance against Vasquez and uh, then it was like we, we were up in the air for a bit then I had no promotional backing. So um, there was lots going on outside the ring. I was working hard in the gym but just had had no uh, yeah no promoter at the time. So it took a while to get that sorted. Matchroom came in, um, signed with them in August, mm-hmm. had my debut in October and a big win against Belmedi. So ideally... I would have liked to get out. Um, I would have liked to fight three times uh, this year, but with everything going on, on outside the ring, um, two is all we could get in, and a big finish to the year. Obviously, with that uh, first round knockout over Belmedi in October, and yeah, set myself up for a big, big twenty three. So, um, excited for that. Well, it's, uh, I mean, I, I've been, oh, gosh, we spoke a bit before. I remember you fighting the Titanic Center in Belfast when there's no changing rooms, there's no showers, there's no heating in November, Freeze. there's no freezing oh, cold. In- so right. it's like watching you now getting that big support from Eddie Hearn and it seems like you're carrying, well, you've always had that power, but it seems right now you're you're really, really sitting on your shots now and you're picking your shots perfectly. You're not rushing them and you're looking for the shot and it's landing. So, I mean, your game has improved in the last, what, three, three, two, three years. Do you agree with that? Yeah, but I like I believe I've always had and like going through the levels and going through the amateurs and for the last number of years I believe I've always had the talent to uh maybe not the talent but the potential to to make it to the top of boxing and um obviously in the gym with Noel with Pete we've been working on certain things and uh with with getting fights behind me against like the likes of Vasquez these uh these good names these legends and then and then coming in with like Again, prospects like Belmedi who are coming to win. Um, it it builds experience. So I'm just I'm I'm just gaining more and more experience each fight, each camp. I believe I'm improving each camp and each fight, and um, it's starting to show in there now. Um, I'm a lot more calm in the build up to fights. I've had the big fight, the big night experience, the pressure of uh, going to Belfast and fighting Joe Fitzpatrick for the Irish title in his hometown. Um, I've built a lot of experience up over the last couple of years, so. I believe I'm in I'm in a good position now where uh, yeah I, I I go into fight weeks and I'm I'm calm I know I know what to expect so um yeah definitely definitely You're getting used to the limelight the exposure being being the top dog as they say exactly yeah and the, like the last it's been mad the last couple of years I've I've turned maybe fifth six years of pro now and I'm going at, at every New Year's Eve I'm going this year's going to be exciting this year's going to be exciting but I feel like this year, 23, is really, this is really the one, like, you know, so um, really exciting 12 months ahead. Definitely, mate. But listen, I, I was looking at your box rec and I was looking at it, and apart from the Craig Woodruff fight, because that was obviously the weight of, above, uh, I believe that was it, yeah. but it was super well weight, wasn't it? 
That was the one four. Yeah, I think the only time, the last time you'd went the distance down at Lightweight was in 2019. So it's been a while since you've gone the distance. It's been, again, Craig Woodrow fight aside because that was the weight above, but it's like you're, you're, you seem to be at six foot two, you can bang. And we've spoken about this before, but now you're getting to that, I called you a prospect. Um, well, I yeah. said, can you call yourself a prospect before we pushed, uh, started this interview? And you said you're a contender now, but now you're a contender. These guys at the top 10 in the world, they're going to be looking at you going six foot two, lightweight. He's, and he knocks, he seems to be knocking quite a lot of people out, some undefeated fighters and legends like Miguel Vasquez. So, I mean, have you, do you think these guys are noticing you now? These guys like the, the Lomachenko's, the, the Devin Haney's, the Giovanni Davis's, the Ryan Garcia's. Do you think they're going to start taking notice of you and going into 2023? I think they'll have to by the end, by the mid to the end of 2023. Um, I think I'll 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 put myself on the map. Another couple of big wins like I've been putting in. Um, all I have to do is focus on my performances, Andy, and mm. that's what I have been doing for the past 18 months, two years since I turned pro. But um, I've been putting in some big performances over the last mm. last couple of years. Obviously, I signed up Macho Man. I probably had a bit of pressure on my shoulders going like it was the first Irish guy who they signed in quite a while and uh, and and making my debut on the on the Katie Taylor undercard and. I'm taking it all in my stride and I'm putting in big performances and I believe that 2023, like I said, is going to be the, the breakout year for me. I thought 2022 was going to be and it kind of was, but 23 is the year I really become, maybe I went from prospect to contender this year, mm. uh, last year, but 2023 is the year that I, I really believe that I'll become a star and um, yeah, these guys are going to start to ha have to take notice of me. Um, I'm moving up in the rankings, I'm putting in big performances, so yeah, I believe it's only a matter of time before I'm uh, flying across the pond to take on the big names. But again, we spoke about this before, Gary. We've said about obviously you, you, you still need these learning fights, blah 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 blah. But you're 26 now. You're 15 and 0. It's 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 got to be now, has it? Yeah, we've been saying about about doing rounds and game. I'm I'm touching guys now and they're dropping. So. Mm. If that's going to continue to be the case, let's just go for it and uh, let's see where I'm at and let's see if I'm as good as I think I am. I believe I am. I know I am. So, uh, yeah, I think it's it's getting to a point now where we, we just make that jump and uh, once you go there, you don't you don't take any step back, steps mm -hmm. back, Andy. Andy. So, uh, I, I believe you, you have to wait for the right time to take it, but I've built up over the last, like I said, five, six years and um, took the right fights at the right time and I think, yeah, 2023 now is the time. Um, I'm gonna step up there. I'm 27 now in January, so mm. um, before I retire with my lot of money. But uh, yeah, no, I think now is the time. 26, 27. Um, putting in big performances, been putting in work in the gym. I'm um, I'm gaining experience every fight, 15 and all now. So yeah, I think now it's time to step up. I want to I want to read the Instagram post you put out two days ago. Um. You wrote, I'm the top dog this side of the pond. Let them boys know I'm coming for the smoke in 2023. And you put an American flag up. Is that a hint about you maybe fighting yeah. over in America one day? Or is that just because that's where Lomachenko, that's where Devin Haney, that's where Javante Davis, and that's where Ryan Garcia are? Is that why you put that post up? Was that a, was that a direct message? That's to a bit of both, guys? yeah. Of course, that was a direct net message to all of them guys. Like the the, the lightweight division, like we say, is, is stacked and it's on fire at the minute. But the top guys in the division are all over there. And I believe I'm one of the top guys in the division. So I believe I am top dog this side of the pond in Europe. And uh, it's only a matter of time before I get over there and start competing with, with, with the lightweight division. Obviously, it's always been a dream of mine to, uh, to fight in America and to... To have some big nights over there, I believe. Um, Madison Square Garden on Paddy's weekend, Paddy's day. Hopefully, we can do that one time. But um, that's that's a plan of mine. But just because the 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 top dogs in my division are 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 based in USA, so um, that's where I want to be. I want to be over there. I want to be competing with these guys and beating these guys, winning belts. So I believe twenty twenty three years is the year that I I begin to do that. Obviously, if you look at twenty twenty three, man, there's a potential. Fighting on the Katie Taylor undercard at Cook Park, maybe a Madison Square Garden show in St. Paddy's Day next year. Um, Taylor in the next year, you could be that fringe world level facing one of the top ten, 
top five maybe, who knows, by the end of the year. So 2023 is just, could be insane for you, for lack of a better word. It could be mental. Yeah, I think it's going to be, like I, I only put up a, a story this morning when I was out running. 2023 is the year I've been waiting for my whole life. So I, I really believe that. I think that I've had I've had some big dreams since I've been a kid. And I think this is the year that I see them all come to fruition. They have been over the last number of years as I've took step ups and uh, and my career has progressed. They have been uh, gradually coming through. But I believe this year, like I said, is the year for me that I've become a star. And like you said, um, never fought in Ireland as a pro. So coming back to Croke Park to, to be co headlining please God, to, to Katie's, uh, Katie and Serrano rematch. And uh, hopefully after that one, we can go we can headline my first show in the Tree Arena and sell out the Tree Arena myself and start becoming a star in my own home. Um, I want to do that. And then, like I said, the tail end of next year, I want to hit the USA and, and take on them top dogs. So 23 can be, can be an absolutely huge year for me. And uh, that's what I'm planning it to be. We touched on it there, uh, the Katie Taylor, Croke Park. I mean, Ireland has been starved of a show of that magnitude for so many years now. I mean, you look at all the big shows in London, Manchester, Liverpool, do you know what I mean? All these massive, even you can go to Glasgow with uh, the big shows that Josh Taylor puts on up there, up here, but it's like Dublin, Ireland, they've been screaming, they've been hungry, they've been wanting big shows like this. So what does that mean for an Irish fighter like yourself to to finally come home on a massive card on a fighting on the undercard of a legend like Katie Taylor, an Irish legend like Katie Taylor. What does that mean for you personally as an Irishman to to fight at Croke Park in front of, gosh, I don't know how many, hundreds, maybe 100,000 fans? Or so, 100,000, something like that. And I, I believe nobody comes out like we do. When, like, you see what McGregor did over in, in Vegas, what he, the, the crowds he used to bring over there. Like, when I, I said it on a, on a podcast the other week, but it's kind of cliche, but when one goes to war, we all go to war. Nobody gets behind fighters like like Irish do. And uh, we've been screaming for for a home show here since the Burner Dunn days. I remember going to them when I was just a kid. And he used to sell out the point. So, um, yeah, for Katie to come back to, to Croke Park is absolutely huge. I know I have big plans and big aspirations in boxing, but that is a huge milestone um, for me, for my career, for me personally. Um, and then just to... Also, to know Katie and have a relationship with her over the years, and then to see her do that, and to get to to get to share a card and and be be co headline or co main event on that card would be absolutely massive. So, uh, it's stuff that you dream about, and and it will it will literally be dreams coming true for me. So, fingers crossed, it all comes off. It looks like uh, the talks are looks like um, match are really pushing to make it happen. So, yeah, yeah, I've got my fingers crossed for it. Good stuff. Well, Gary, one final one from me then before I let you go and enjoy your the rest of your Monday. Um, because knowing you, you're probably gonna do a thousand prep press ups or a thousand set ups after this interview anyway. You never you're always a couple doing... press ups, just chilling with the feet up, Andy. Look. Oh, good um, man. Well done. You deserve it, mate. Well done. Yeah, that, that that run was tough this morning. So I'll take the rest of the day off. Oh, good man. Well done. But listen. Like again, going back to that Instagram post, being a top dog at this side of the pond, we all know who the top dogs are on the other side of the pond in America. You got a message for them coming into 2023? Yeah, I'm coming for all the smoke. Um, I've, I've said I, I always wanted, I wanted the big names, I wanted the biggest fights, the brightest lights, so that's that's where I'm aiming towards and that's what I'm coming for in 2023. I've got a, I believe I've always had the talent, maybe didn't have the experience, I've been building that up over the last couple of years and now I've got the, the promotional backing behind me with Eddie and with Matchroom, so... Uh, 2023 is going to be massive for me and I'm coming for all them big names. Listen, Gary, thank you very much, bro, man. 2023 is going to be an amazing year for yourself. I can feel it, mate, because like I said, I've been been there when you were 3-0, 4-0, fighting at the Ulster Hall and that Titanic Centre, man. And it's good to see you doing well. It's good to see what you you, what you deserve, mate, because you put in the work and, you, yeah, like I yeah, said... I've, I've, started, I've started on the small hall scene, Andy, also. I've come up mm -hmm. the hard way, you know? So mm. I, I know what both sides of boxing. I didn't just start on, on this on this matchroom train and, and and get all the big shows. I've had to I've had to graft since twenty seventeen and been on ticket deals and fighting for free or or little or no money and paying opponents and stuff. I've done the hard work. So um it's a, it's all starting to, to come into fruition for me now and it's exciting time. So you've been there from the start, brother. So we appreciate exactly. all your time. Yeah, just just remember that every time Coogan comes to that interview, <laughs> you remember who was there from the beginning. 100%.
listen, Gary, you deserve it, mate. You work hard for it. So, listen, 2023 is going to be amazing. And I'll be there at Croke Park because I'll be pushing for that one anyway when that happens, if that happens. So, listen, bro, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, listen, let's look forward to a 2023, a massive 2023. Appreciate it, bro. Happy New Year. Thank you, you for your well. time. Good, Gary. Thank you, mate. Nice. <laughs>